Hello. Um, um, sorry for this short delay. Um, welcome to um, this tutorial. I'm happy that ADAS is uh, hosting yet another of my tutorials about um, um, containing the um, virtual observatory and um, the standards and tools that we can use, and in particular, um, the use you can make of with um, PyVO. So today's tutorial um, is uh, dealing with that. The um, the title is AstroPy, PyVO, and the Radio Realm, um, which um, is related to, or what we're going to do is we're going to use um, quite a bit of PyVO to um, access data and to find data um, related to radio. Um, um, observations. And for this, we're going to use a few services and standards like Opscore, like TAP, and um, we also use Datalink and Zoda, the a bit unknown data uh, um, standards um, that people are not aware of so, so much. And we just want to introduce what you can do with that. And um, um, in the first half, we're going to um, um, introduce to these data and how to access these um, from the two, from 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 um, Topcat and PyVO. And um, after a short break, so in an hour, we're going to have a short break of 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how far we go through um, with the tutorial. We are after the break. We are going to focus on. Um, using the SAM protocol to bring things together and work things together and um, not just sending using SAM to or PyVO SAM clients to send data that you find found and accessed in the internet or in the in the virtual observatory, but also to receive data and to use um, the um, the full full scale of Python that you can um, but that's that's available there. My co Tutor today is Dave Morris. Um, I'm not sure if Dave joined us yet. Um, he just got um, 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 maybe a small personal um, disaster today. We don't know yet. So um, I don't know if he can join, but I will do um, the best to go through um, with this. This being said, um, I cannot keep, if I share, start sharing the stream, I cannot keep the participants list in, um, in, the, in my loop. So um, please, maybe Marco, um, Marco Molinario or um, anybody, if you see a raised hand or if you have a question, raise your hand, interrupt me. I'm fine with being interrupted. I'm fine if you ask questions. And if people could point me to somebody who has a question, that would be great. That would be um, very, very great. I'll try to do that, Hendrik, but I won't be here all of the time. So uh, I'll send a message on the chat when I'll, I'll detach myself. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. In any case, Malcolm, that's that would be great. I'll try to help. Okay. Thank you. That's um, that's that's great to um, to have back up here. So um, yeah, I'm going to start to share my screen to talk about what we're actually doing. So hopefully that works out nicely. And, um, oh yeah, um, sorry. I stopped share my screen because I will post a, will post the link into the chat that I published on, um, on, um, on Discord already. So here is the link to a GitHub repository uh, where you find um, a PDF file and all the examples and exercises in the tutorial um, are published there. So that's the starting point. Um, the PDF that you find is not exactly self-explanatory. So it's not meant to be a standalone introduction into anything. Neither is it an introduction meant as an introduction to PyVO, TopCat, or any of the um, tools that we make use of here. Um, but it's it's more likely that you get an idea what you can do with that. And for the hands-on exercises that we have in the PDF, yeah, it's entirely possible to do them in your own pace. It's not meant that you finish all of these exercises in the coming two, um, two hours. So don't be frustrated if it doesn't work out in the way um, that you hope for that. Um, that's normal. It's not meant. It's not possible. Um, if we really want to teach all of what we are going to do, we would take um, um, quite more time than two hours. That being said, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, you can see my screen already. And um, yeah, here we start out. 
just organizing a few things on my screen. It, so every, can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. So um, the use case that we're going to um, going to present here is we have in mind in the back of our mind that um, what we do eventually will be kind of useful for scientists and to develop. Um, the use case eventually will be that we're going to use um, the SAM protocol and the, the magic that SAM provides us and the magic that um, um, Python and PyVO provides us to um, write SAM clients and to, to uh, um, that help us analyze data. And um, in this case, we're going to introduce in the first half how we can use um, PyVO and TopCat to find data of interest um, that we can so that we can combine the data. The idea here is we're going to take table data um, that we um, with, an with a list of objects of interest of ours that we have locally. And we're going to um, 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 cross-match this data with the SDSS catalog to obtain the colors from there. And um, then we're going to search for radio data um, and to um, radio observational data. So we are going to try to figure out if there are observational data, probably image data in there, and um, eventually we'll access this data with, um, with a quite cool way um, because we are not simply downloading images. That would be kind of a bit boring here. Um, in the second half, then we're going to try to bring together all the steps that we have, um, the, or a lot of the steps, not of the finding of the data, but of the analysis of the data and the moving around of the data, and that we use um, SAM for that in future and um, invoke um, a lot of the actions from a top kit via SAM, and that will be the second half of them. So um, we start out. We have the... Um, if you check out um, the um, the GitHub repo, or if you download it um, via HTTP, that's entirely possible. Doesn't matter what what of the both um, of the two you do. Um, that will be the um, this will be what you see in your in your folder. There, um, we have the data and the Python code in the folder PySource, and we have the presentation. Um, um, and the tutorial um, will be here in the PDF file here. You won't have that PDF file. That's a presentation that we use in between. That's not um, 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 part of the, well, it's, it's attached to the tutorial, but not um, um, a crucial content of the tutorial. Um, PyVOradio.pdf, that's um, what you can access and what you can download to follow everything here. And there we find, there you found out. Um, software that we use is TopCat. Um, in, I'm not using the most recent version. That was quite a bit too too recent for me, Mark. But thank you for publishing that. And um, we will have Aladdin running in the version 11 and PyVO in the most recent version that you have. And at the last step of the tutorial, we will make use of matplotlib. So you may want to install that too. But um, that's not not necessary for the, um, the, the the tutorial to actually work. Okay, that said, um, how do we start? Well, we're trying to find, to, to work out how to actually find data in, um, in the VO registry. A good part of um, whenever you try to search data, um, you access um, the VO registry and you, um, well, you use the VO registry to simply search for the data. So um, I'm going to, to do that by starting TopCat. And um, yeah, well, here we go, not too far, so you can still see, see it on top. So um, I'm starting with a, um, with a vanilla TopCat that I have here. And um, well, I will load my table of interest into TopCat, which is in my Pi source, the sources here. And there it's the, um, at this stage, it's um, the VO table with objects. So let's load it into here. Look into this. We have just a table with a pair, with pairs of um, RA index. So um, 19, we have 19 um, and pairs in here. And um, that's, um, 
what you can well I, I suggest that you follow the tutorial load um, these uh, follow the steps so you also load the objects into topcat um because then you will may need that or the steps um, for the exercises later so um yeah i have the i have the table in here and um now my first step would be i'm going to try to figure out if there is data out there that provides me with colors for the SDSS. So far, so good. That's not um, that's not a big um, secret here. And we're going to take um, 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 the tab protocol for do that and open that. And here you see, um, I have all the list of tab services out there. And I can simply say in the keywords, something like give me SDSS in the version 12. And I find that on Tab Vizier. So there are two tables for that. So I can access Tab Vizier by double clicking here, by clicking on, um, sorry, not find service, marking the table here, and then new service or by service properties or just simply by double clicking on the service. It may take a few seconds while the metadata of the service is fetched here. Um, here it comes. The metadata is um, very crucial. A lot of what we're doing today is will be um, linked to the metadata and just works um, because metadata is so well defined in, in, in the virtual observatory. Now, what we actually did already here is we ask, just use the registry to search stuff. And the registry is, um, um, and we search the registry um, unbeknownst to us because we just used the keyword. But actually the query that was running in the background was, um, I was using, um, um, or, or, or was, the query was not just um, searching for SDSS 12, but also included that I'm searching for tap services that provide me with SDS um, 12. So there was already something running in the background that I didn't know and just use um, to access the service as I would use Google or something alike. And that's the goal of the virtual observatory that you get used to you, um, to this stuff to work with that. And um, so if I access that here, um, access the, the service, I can find information on the service, um, top easier. There is a lot of metadata. Um, you can see there is, um, um, for instance, a link. If I get stuck, I could ask um, um, I could ask um, the CDS support team um, to access the service. Um, if I don't know the people um, who are actually working there, um, for me, it's the colleagues in the neighboring offices. For others, that might be, um, well, yeah, as some of you are in South Africa, that might not be as easy um, to access um, these people. So you may want to send a link here. This is already something in the metadata on the service that you can use. Um, I'm searching for SDS 12 here. So um, access this table here. And now you see, I also get meta about the metadata, about the schema, about the table at all. So that's the output of the STSS photometric catalog in Vizier. And if I click here, I get, wow, there is a lot of things. Um, there is a lot of data um, 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 linked to that. And you see that's, um, well, the, the metadata on the columns. And here I can make a selection of already find um, and make a selection what I want to do with my data and the data and in which of um, um, and which data I want to access, which data I'm interested in. And um, in our case, what we want to do is we make a we make a tab upload. So we do click on um, upload join, which basically means that um, the table I have here, the with, with the pairs of objects. Now um, that's the table number one. Um, that's defined here as table number one. And um, now I'm going to, to, to cross match this table with um, the SDSS. Um, well, but I will make a selection because I'm really not interested in all of these columns. I'm just interested in a very few columns actually. So um, you find the ADQL query in the tutorial. There you see that um, a similar query um, that looks something like this. So I'm um, um, I'm interested in in the um, in the SS, um, um, SDSS ID. Um, 
STS S minus ID. Minus ID, I'm interested in complete what I have in top kit here. So I want to keep my positions. So I'm, I'm having that one. And um, yeah, I'm also interested in the G magnitude. I'm interested in, um, in the I magnitude. I'm interested in the, yeah, I see there is a problem with the G magnitude, with the R magnitude. I'm interested also in the U magnitude. And there I miss a comma here. Why would it complain here? Does it really want to have the... I think it needs the quotes on that. Yeah, yeah, I see. That's it's not IDQL. So, yeah. Is, is that what we want? Yeah, we're going to be a little bit more narrow on that side of, of what we make. And yep, that's our query and we run the query. So your query might look um, um, a bit different. Um, you may have a different naming here. Don't worry, um, you can do that. And it might take a few seconds, here you go. There is the answer from the query. Now we, um, um, we have um, seven columns as we before had two columns. Have a look into the columns and you see, yep, here's the STSS ID, here's our, um, the positions that we keep kept and here are all the magnitudes that we have. Um, we're going to keep this table. This table might be the one that we use to send around um, all the time. At a few, at, at some points, we're going to close TopKit. So if you run into a problem already, don't worry because um, it, you find actually the content, the very content of this table in the folder PySource. There is um, this content, the fallback of object colors. At one point, we will even close TopCat for good reasons, and you will understand at that time um, to, um, yeah, well, to, um, 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 to find, yeah, sorry, we will close TopCat to tidy up what we have in TopCat, and then we will fall back to that. So this said, you already find a few exercises here. Um, have a look in the metadata browser here and figure out um, um, if you can find information about the services or the catalog. So in the PDF on page four at the top, there are these two exercises. And um, you can also play around with a VO registry, VO registry being this part here. You can try to search for tap services um, that provide you with data and that you are interested in that, well, you are interested in not given by me and find if, if you find these. Um, so for instance, tri gamma ray or um, active galactic nuclei um, or search for gravitational waves. Well, let's see, let's search for gravitational, gravitational waves here. If we find something, hmm, not really. So out of the 120 um, 20 top services, it doesn't seem that we have something there. It might be that gravita well, um, gravita gravitational waves might not come as table data. So please, um, until now, just follow the steps, give you a five minutes break for that so that you can follow the steps that we just did. And then we continue with that. Well, well maybe a three minutes break will suffice. Oh, Hendrik? Yes. Hi. I'm Stefania. Hi. Um, yep. Is it possible that you had a typo when you typed gravitational waves? Because I actually find something. It's entirely possible that I make mistakes. Yes. Gravi yeah, gravitational waves. I think I just found the typo. Gravi uh, but it's still. Oh, there's yeah. a lot. Gravitational waves. 
Oh yeah, there you you find the five papers on on Vizier for that, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. Yes, sorry, of course I made a typo. Thank you. Um, that's the very moment to tell people. Um, yeah, if you think I make a mistake, as Stefania did, please interrupt me. Please tell me. It's really bad if I make mistakes, and the worst thing that can happen if you correct me is that I learn something new. So please do so. It's better than I learn something new and that I stand corrected than that people um, take what I dare say for granted and for truth. If um, So it's um, please feel free to do so. I encourage you to interact. So, yeah, um, since we have the fallback, fallback um, table that basically um, would contain all the data that we just obtained, I will, um, I will continue um, with the tutorial. Now, um, what we just did was, um, was in TopCat, and um, we promised we're going to use PyVO, of course, for that. And that's what we're going to do now. So the nice bit of standards and um, is and protocols is, um, if they work properly, you are, and if it's open standards, you are not relying on the software that is out there. No, you can write your own software and you can use um, software or you can use the programming language of your choice and um, develop against the standard. And in our cases, develop client software that deals with the standard. Of course, um, somebody um, programmed the standards and the APIs that TopCat uses in Java. I think a good part of that um, comes from Mark Taylor as well and other contributors. Contributors um, Nowadays, people do very something similar for PyVO and that's what we're going to use. So. Um, we're starting with having a look into into the folder example one where we um, and um, where we find in the the file rec search in all the example folders just to to say that the example there is um, the uh, something called example um, with a number and in the in these folders you will find a few scripts that don't start with exercise um, exercises, um, will have solutions. So everything that starts with the word exercise actually presents a solution to one of the um, um, to one of the um, 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 exercises that we give. So on page four, you see um, you might find in brackets the solution for this. Also, if for the exercises and for the examples that we give at the very very end of the documents under point nine, you will find helpful links which are um, in order of the, um, of the examples. And there you find also find the numbers of the examples. And these links are kind of useful or proved useful for these examples. And it's um, a good idea to follow them to get the idea um, and to, well, to, to look into these links um, for, deal, for solving these um, exercises. You may find that Example five is missing. The reason for that is that the um, exercise for five is so surprisingly easy that you don't need hand for that. Yeah, let's have a look into what actually is in red search in my Python script here. So here it is. It's a short script as you see. And um, all I do is I import PyVO and um, at, at the top and I build the service object here. So that shall be my PyVO registry search. And what I'm doing is I'm searching for the service type tap and the waveband radio and that. And then, well, give me back and print, just print the service object there. That's fairly easy. And that's great. Let's look how that actually look, um, works. So yeah, start the whole thing and let it run. Um, at that time, you see there are warnings at the top. That happens occasionally, and um, we will see them um, for a while until we solve that problem or until we find a solution to get rid of the warnings. But I don't want to hide the fact that there are warnings and that there are things 
going wrong sometimes. If you develop in PyV or if you do in the develop in the real world, well, the real world is um, is dirty. Well, we know that from science, um, all this stuff is not behaving in exactly the way that we expect it to. So and so it is in the environment of developing of software development, and you need to get an idea how to deal with that because that's how you face what you face in the wild. So let's see it. Um, let's present it here too. You see, these are the services that match with the um, with. Um, with the criteria that the service type shall be tap and that the wave band shall be radio. And you already get an idea um, that, oh, I can, um, that there might be many more services out there. And there are. And for um, the exercise here now is um, that you find the three exercises that you try to modify this very short script in the way um, that it's instead of searching um, for um, for the waveband radio, it shall be searching for um, Gaia data. And the second S exercise will be that instead of searching um, searching for a tap service and for Gaia data, then it shall um, it shall search for the app service providing data from the Hubble Space Telescope. Sorry, from the Hubble Space Telescope, and eventually the last, the third exercise is um, to modify the script in a way that it will search for OPSTAP services out there providing us with radio data. That's what our use case actually is. And there is a good reason why we do that, don't do that in Py, um, in, in TopKit, but we do that in Python. So again, maybe well, five minutes to, um, to, to complete this task and to have a look into what we're doing here. I'm very sorry, I just lost the connection but um, my internet connection, but I, it seems I'm coming right back to solve the, um, to solve, solve the exercise. Sorry for this. Um, yeah, so we, um, we um, had the exercise of um, dealing with the reg um, 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 registry search. So um, in the first go, we are looking into our example into um, our exercise example about the Gaia data, how we did this. And well, that's fairly easy. If we compare the two scripts, what was the change here is um, still a tap service that we're searching for. And now we're searching for Gaia. The bit tricky part here was that um, we had we didn't look into a wave band because Gaia of course isn't a wave band. Gaia is a keyword. So we had to figure out um, that there is a keyword um, missing. And um, how do you actually do that? Well, if you look into the hints um, of this part of the help, helpful links, then you see that um, we have links to the PyVO registry search as well um, 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 about the registry search results, how um, they work in the um, how they work in in, in um, in PyVO. So um, let's um, have a look into this PDF and then I can show you um, this link as well. So let's scroll down to the very back. There is the standards, the helpful links. So and if I double click that and um, get the, um, the, 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 the documentation about the PyBio registry search, then I find that the parameters that I can give the arguments to that are keywords, service type, wave bands, data model, and um, the include always the Boolean. So these are, <clears throat> um, um, so this is very special. You don't need actually need these. These are the ones that I can use um, with the registry search. And that is, um, of course, how one should access um, the, um, or how one should use the um, 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 the, the documentation of PyVO to figure out um, what you might want, what, what you might need, and um, what's helpful in the doc um, to continue um, and to use um, the registry search or all other. Um, 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 classes that we make use of. And <clears throat> the same goes with our last exercise that we had 
um, not the last, but the second exercise, which is the Hubble tel Space Telescope, where um, we have the um, where we have the service type as the ZEP service, and where the keywords are the Hubble Space Telescope, and eventually um, there is kind of a bit um, a trick in here, and that is if um, we're doing the very same thing for the um, um, for the radio data where we're searching for obscure services, then sorry. <clears throat> then we are searching for the service type tap and we're searching for the waveband radio, but we're searching for a data model. And the reason here is that OpsCore is not a service type, it's a data model type on a tap service. So a term, an OpsCore service is just a very specialized tap service. And um, that, that um, said, um, a lot of times you will see that people use um, the word OpsCore or OpsTub very, very, very um, similar. But if we say OpsTub, we basically say that's an Ops um, that's, that that's the service side. And when we say OpsCore, then we um, um, or mostly we mean um, the data model that's behind um, that's that's used on the service. And yeah, we're going to um, to see in a bit what that actually means and why we're going to OpScore. OpScore is the data model that we use for observational data. So OpScore is meant um, not meant for table data or for source catalogs. It's meant for observational data. So be it images, be it, um, be it um, um, spectra, or whatever you can imagine that's coming for, with the observational data, um, the data model shall explain um, how you can access this data. And it's a standard. Um, furthermore, it's defining, again, sorry. Furthermore, it's defining a standard that you can query the standard um, or query this against this model um, in a unified way, which means you can send the very same query to all ops core services that you figure out and um, reply, get a reply from the service. It might be empty because the service then says, um, I don't have any data, observational data on my site, matching your criteria, but um, still you can do this. And immediately you see why this is so, um, why that is so crucial to be able to do this in Python. Because if I actually run the radio, um, run the radio script, then you see, that um, I have a list of just a few services out there that um, reply to me and um, that I can use um, to um, to query against and to 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 search the ops core data there. These are five services. For five services, yeah, it's entirely possible that I do that um, um, that I do that manually in Topcat, but I wouldn't do that for twenty services. Um, that's quite, quite, um, uh, well, that's that's not nice. I don't want to do that. That's something that I want to iterate over and that I want to let a Python script do. Um, especially maybe if I have to do to, um, um, to continue with that query, um, like once per week, maybe um, because the observational data um, is, is from surveys, from living surveys that um, will update um, a few times. Or just imagine um, when um, the Vera Rubin telescope is, um, um, is um, publishing data. Well, you, you're basically doing the same thing every day, if you like, to um, when the data is updated and um, and to find the, the most recent, um, the, well, the most recent observational images for your research. So, yeah, that's a good thing to do to have in Python to deal with this. Um, and um, note, there is another thing that, um, that we did in the radio, in exercise radio. Well, it's, it's already some, oh, it's over here. It's over here already. There is another thing that we added here, and that is um, we imported warnings and said, yeah, we simply turn off the warnings in future. So the warnings that we see saw in the other scripts are no, will not be 
there anymore. The reason simply is um, to keep um, the, the tutorial a bit sane and to, be, to, to keep the examples readable. Yet, of course, when you do this, um, you might miss some of the useful warnings um, whilst development. So when you're developing, don't do that. Um, he, um, for the sake of the presentations, I dare to do this. So, and of course, as I said, I want, don't want to pretend everything is perfect here, but it's very helpful if you do. Now, um, something that's very feasible from, um, from scripts that are as easy as now is, if we use the IPython interpreter, um, I can simply build these objects that I have here and, um, and um, yeah, I can simply copy and paste the whole thing. And then I have, here I have the warnings, then I have the first service object, um, services object available and um, can look into these objects and um, can can have a look what, um, yeah, well, I can have a look into actually explore what's the possible thing to do. Well, I can use the whole table and broadcast that um, to Topcat via SAM, for instance, or I can get some field descriptions about who, about um, what is in the table here. So here you have the metadata and I can use that to access um, this uh, metadata. Um, if we look into the help disc well, for the next exercise, look into the help description because that will be very helpful there. Um, there you will find the hints and about um, what you can expect in an object for these and what you can actually um, um, achieve once you have these services or the list of services here. So again, um, simply look into what are the services here. And now let's think about um, what do I actually want from the table with the services? Well, you see, what I see now is that I see a column here, which gives me something weird. And here is a column with something weird. But of course, there are a lot of columns in between that might give me, um, give me um, um, useful, useful information here. So, um, if I analyze the um, the, the the service um, object or the, the the table that I have with the services and analyze a single service object, I might get an, an idea and a hint um, how I can access these services in a reasonable way, which might be useful. And that is um, the next exercise out there for you on page four at the very bottom. Try to figure out the properties of the services. In particular, we're interested in a reasonable name of each service and a URL which we can use to access this service in a later tutorial step. So I think I'm gonna give you two minutes for this. You can either try it from the command line or you may want to have a look into um, into how a registry research result actually looks like. What I can expect in um, from from that um, from the registry. Um, so, or if I go here, the um, the dull results. What I can see find in these um, in these data records going to stop here and let's have a look into the um, into the um, um, solution of this problem in the exercise service information and there you see um, again well we're importing the stuff turning off the warnings that will stay the way for the rest of the python scripts here and we again um, define um, um, or, or query the registry for services, top radio and opscore, that's what we want. And um, yep, of course, 
um, if that's it's, if it's a service that shouldn't work actually if I'm as I see that that should work sorry you may run into a problem with that script and um, you have to correct the indent indentation here is wrong so um, I can since there are many serv or several services in here, and it's a list of services, well, I can, over, uh, of course, iterate over the list. And um, I find properties, in, in, if I look into the field description, I find the properties for each of these service objects. There is a short name and um, there is an access URL. So, well, let's run that and see. See. and see what the results say. And here you see, well, yeah, that's simply the mapping. I have the short name of the tab service from the metadata on the service, and I have the um, and I have a URL that I can use to access the service. And um, this URL um, basically translates to something that you, where's, this is the window where I keep Topcat. This translates to something that I can use at the bottom here. I wanted to prove that simply by, well, let's copy and paste the Astron part here, paste it in there and say, well, let's use the service. Since this is the service with the first result, um, does make kind of sense um, to look at the service. And of course, um, that's the service that um, I decided to take when I started writing the tutorial. Hence, that's cheating, I know. But you get an idea on how, how we can work with that and how we can um, figure out and how we use can use Python to search um, the VO registry. It's actually, um, to be honest, um, the Python script, if you get think like, yeah, well, actually using it this way is a bit clunky. Um, in fact, it is not clunky at all because um, if you have, for instance, Topcat, and I won't complain about Topcat, Topcat is great. Um, but the feature for Topcat, of course, is when I go to the Topcat cone search service and search or cone search window and search for services here, I search the registry for cone search services. And if I use the top service, I'm using the regist searching the registry for tab services, but um, with PyVO or with Py um, the, um, the um, registry search in PyVO, I'm not limited to that. I can um, write my own queries to, um, to search for the data, and that um, gives me a bit of a more freedom um, in my search. And of course, um, if one wants, you can write um, search that's or use the registry to write your own search according to your needs um, that updates itself regularly. With that, we're proceeding um, to chapter four. Maybe I'm asking, are there any questions or comments at this moment? I, oh, I can turn on and off chats. Um, so I can have a look in chat. Does, not in the chat, what does participants say? I don't know. So no raised hands. Okay, so let's continue with chapter four. Um, finding data. Right now, we were finding services. So I found an Astron, so the Astron service that provides me with OpScore, um, the, the OpScore data model and um, with radio data. So now we are talking about how to actually find the service. And therefore, we're going to use OpScore. OpScore, as I um, introduced, is a special standard. And I'm going to use um, a Topcat to explain why it is a sp um, the, the special thing about the standard. So OpScore services have to fulfill stricter rules or very strict rules um, so that um, they behave in, um, in a very, very, or in the same manner in the of course, they don't return the same replies because the data on the services are differently, but the way how they um, 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 expose this data to you is standardized all across the um, or, um, across all OpScore services. And it starts with things, if you look at, this is the Astron data, and if you look at the table names here, 
yeah, well, um, it's nice that they are called like um, like LOFA or that they are here yeah, the LOFA tier one. Um, it's nice that they have TGSSRD or whatever. Here's top schema that's also for the registry something. There's Appetif. And um, that's great. And you find your way through that. But um, these names, these table names are arbit arbitrary. So it doesn't matter what kind of a table name there is. If I want to query against this table name, you, it doesn't matter what the um, table name is. Um, I don't know um, about this table name unless I kind of ask the service for the table names there. And um, if I look into the into the table name, um, tables um, itself or themselves, um, then you find, yeah, well, um, for instance, if I'm talking about positions, then I find center alpha and delta here. Um, apparently this is for images um, and it doesn't make sense to have center alpha, center delta. Now I look into the next table here and do I have even have positions in here? Um, don't see a name for that. Um, but I'm pretty sure we will have, yep, yeah, here's a source catalog, here are positions, and they are called array and deck. So these are arbitrary names. Now, there is one table on the service, and that's the reason why I took the service, and thanks Jan for, Jan Grange, for um, doing this when I demand it and ask for it. Here's, um, well, not exactly that, but yes, thanks for introducing the OpsCore standard to your service. Here it is, there's the op OpsCore. Um, um, table. On all OpsCore services, this table has to be there. And on all OpsCore services, this table with exactly these column names have to be there. And um, that is crucial because now I can use a single ADQL query that I can design and use this query and run it on all services that provide me with OpsCore. And how do I find the OpsCore service that I'm interested in? Well, that were, were the steps before. So I can indeed simply use, um, use um, um, PyVO and Python with, with the logic to first find out all the OpsCore services I'm interested in. Then I define an ADQL query for that, for the services, and then iterate over the services and simply send the, um, the query to these services. And that is very, very, very useful for data discovery. Um, though the results, of course, might be overwhelming. Um, that is that is a very, very, very useful standard um, when it comes um, to data discovery. And so, hence, how does that actually work? Well, as you see here, um, for instance, if I'm talking about positions, then I have SRA and under S underscore deck. These are the... Um, these are the um, um, columns um, that I can query against when I want to um, um, query um, for positions. So I don't have to th think about center alpha, center delta. I don't have to think about um, um, rush 2000, dash 2000 or whatever. I can simply use S underscore array, S underscore deck and do it. Um, um, furthermore, I find things like, oh, there is uh, something like TM and Tmax. What is that? Well, that's the lower bound of time and the upper bound of time. And you see, um, these are standardized, so I can simply write one and the same query for all of them. And that is what we're going, um, what we're going to do in, in the next steps. And we're not doing that in Topcat. Nope, we are going to do that in um, in PyVO. So we change to the folder example two. Keep in mind that for each of the examples, we have um, hints um, in chapter nine of the tutorial. And um, in example two, you are going to um, do the exercise on the bottom, um, the two exercises on the bottom of page five. I think I'm um, I want to give you five minutes for that. The first exercise is that in um, in our yep, there is only one there is only one um, one file that's not starting with exercise, and that's opsco. I'm closing the other scripts, so yeah, I can't do that. That's behind zoom. So here I have um, 
a, um, a Python script dealing with the Opscore service. Just to explain again, um, make sure at this time that Topcat is running and Topcat is running. Topcat shall be connected to a SAMPUP. Topcat is connected to a SAMPUP and I will use that. Okay. And again, I turn off the warnings. Um, we found out in our last query how I find the access URL of a service. That's great. Here I have it. And um, I can define an ADQL query. I take a very simple one here. I just, um, you don't have to be fluent in ADQL to follow the tutorial. So that's the good news here. Um, and don't worry if you don't get everything in ADQL um, at that point. So this basically means select the first three, um, the first three results from um, um, the table IVOA upscore. So we're just taking three because as an example, then we make um, the service object. That is how you make um, a tab service object. So Opscore is just a specialized tab service. So the, how to make a tab service object is the same thing for all tab services. Um, of course, it depends on the access URL that you have. And um, we will read the result by running this query, oops, this query in here. And the result we will broadcast to Topcat because we can use SAMP. No, here's our first usage of SAMP today. And um, yep, that's what we're going to do. Python Opscore. So this is the example here. And here are three results. And you get, okay, the first results that I find here are spectra. So, um, uh, that is just the first results from the database. I didn't give anything special here. So I find, well, that is how I queried this service. Now, the um, exercises are on the bottom of page five, And the first one is change the script, the Opscore script in the way at the ADQL query here, change the ADQL query so that it is performing a cone selection around a given position at RA 240 and DEC 40 um, of 1.2 degrees. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, keep the limit of um, top three and don't go for, I don't know, 100 or so. Um, that will keep um, things very fast. The second exercise is take a closer look at the metadata browser um, in TopCat. Um, of the service, so you can copy and paste um, this one. Take a um, well, take a take a, well. Use the metadata browser to take a look, and um, and think of an alternative solution that um, you could use to ask the question like: Is my given position within the coverage of a data product on your service? So what you need for that is any Opscore service so that you can read and, um, the, um, um, and access the column names of that Opscore service and just have a look into that um, if you find um, that. And um, once you do so, think, think a moment about the two difference or the differences of these two solutions. And again, don't forget, there are hints in chapter nine dealing with exactly that. In this case, you will find ADQL um, geometries, very useful when you want to perform a, a cone search. And you find the link to the ops core standard. I give you that. Reading the ops core standard, um, the whole standard now is a bit, uh, well, yeah, don't, don't go for that. But... Um, um, actually, if you want to get more involved, if you want to have a, have a deeper understanding, um, it's um, recommended to do so. I give you give you that reading standards is um, is a bit like reading the manual of um, of a new computer, and um, we all want to do it um, want to do it in the right way, and want to, want to do it in the way that we're supposed to do it um, that we think it's, it should work like, but. Um, once you run into a wall or into a problem, reading the standards is um, brings you closer to the solution. Unless you find the solution on Stack Overflow, of course. So.
So, um, let's let's solve the exercise. What we are what we're doing here. So the first thing was, well, let's do a cone selection. And a cone selection in ADQL works roughly like that. So you still have select top three from what? From IBOA ops core, and then there is a where clause. And the cone selection is where one contains point, and, and the point is, um, is um, defined by the columns S underscore or AES and deck. These are equal in all ops core services. And here we have the circle. That's our cone with a position doing that around. The rest is the same. Um, oops, the rest stays the same. So that works very um, properly. And again, we broadcast all the results to Sam. So that's not too, too hard um, of an exercise actually. And let's run that. And here we go and have the results now in TopCat. And if I look into this, then again, you see Yeah, so what happened here? Um, it's the same result as you see. And the reason for that um, is, um, um, is quite, um, is, is funny because basically, apparently I tried all the scripts before I ran the, um, um, before I ran the um, um, tutorial. And what happens here is that um, this data is still in the cache. So for the sake of this tutorial, I will simply change the, um, that's, that's, sorry, this is funny. Um, I will change the position here. It doesn't matter that it, uh, what position it is and rerun um, the cone selection. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> and hopefully I will now have a different, it's still a spectrum and, but it, the, um, yes, the, the position is, is a different one. So that's great. Ooh, lucky us. Um, and you see that um, that's the um, that's the result of the cone selection. Um, now um, the second thought was um, cone selection is one thing. What could I use to um, to make a different thing here? And, and here the point is, if you look into the table here, then you find not only find um, things like um, um, the, um, the time minimum and the time maximum for observations. You also find um, the exposure times. You find um, 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 the wavelength represented in the data sets, the minimum and the maximum wavelength. And um, if you um, look look into that, then you find things like um, S underscore region, for instance. And this is the region covered by the observation as a polygon. And you can think about that. Well, if you have an image, of course, the image is covering a region on the sky and you can describe this region on the sky for each of, of the images. And if I use the region in the in as a geometry in a query, I would not ask, like I'm defining my position and a cone around my position to um, to define um, if there is a coverage. I could simply take my position and ask: um, Is my position within the region of any of your observation? And this is quite a difference um, for the results in the end. Um, if I define a cone around my position, um, I might end up with um, um, well. I, I might end up with um, an image, or that then I basically I'm not asking just the intersection and um, of the of the um, observation and my cone. I'm asking for something that includes the cone, so it is in this observation region. But um, I would lose, for instance, um, um, images that, um, or I, I would lose an image that is in my cone, um, but not. Um, but does not well it does cover data in my cone that I'm interested in, but just a part of the image is outside. So that's not exactly what I want, or that the image does not cover the whole of my cone, but still um, might have in, um, data I'm interested in. So I have to think about um, which of these geometries I actually use for which um, use case here, and that is very, very useful um, to, remem to, to remember. So 
let's look at the exercise region, which is the solution for that one. And there you see, well, um, actually a polygon would have been, should be something like, um, like um, a polygon, polygon then and then um well and in here in the in the brackets i would define the polygon with points around the polygon so with the corner points of the polygon and um but if i run this we will see in a um then and look into the result of that then you see that i really simply could use um the contents of this column because the contents of that column are a polygon always. So um, the, if I look into the, these results in TopCat, then it's becoming clear why that is so useful for me for, for my search. So again, I just have the three. And if I look into that, yep, there is a pop. Um, now you see things have changed in here because I'm asking for the region. It, because it's a different query, it has different results. And if I look into the region, then you see that the polygon is, is defined very well here, and that I could simply, um, simply, um, um, or, or um, the ops core service took this data um, and knew, well, there is a polygon defined, but that's on the server side. That's why I could use it and say, I have it there. I have um, this data myself, so I provide myself with the data and this I can use to compare with your query. So that, of course, um, was a bit tricky, but um, well, have a look into um, what's useful on the observational data because that's how you can access that. And that's very, very easy to do. Now, of course, eventually there it is. How do I bring that together? And um, because the hour is, oops, because the hour is almost um, done, I will... Um, I will skip that exercise for you and simply say, yeah, let's um, have a look into the solution for that immediately. Because um, if you look at it, it's not that hard, actually. So what, I, what am I doing here if I bring the scripts together? So um, again, remember, my first thing was I was searching for services. Um, in the VO registry um, where the service type is tap, the data model is ops core and the wave band is radio. And once I have these services, um, then I can simply iterate um, over these. So for each service in my list of services, perform this query. Here you see I use a different query or slightly different query, but I make use of the um, S underscore region here because, well, why not? It's easy. I don't have to type the polygon, yay. And, um, or I don't have to take care of more, that's great. And again, well, uh, the result of that, um, after this query, the result shall be sent, um, broad podcast to SAMP, or shall be sent to TopKit via SAMP. Well, easy, easy thing to do. Let's, let's go for that. And, run. Now that was fast, wasn't it? Um, of course, um, the results are, that are coming in, you see the, the SAMP, um, you saw the, the SAMP um, hub running a bit. So the results came in, but effectively, I only received one table, which basically means that only one of the services, and I got an error here. So one of the services Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so um, here AstroPy is complaining because apparently one of the services simply was empty um, did not reply accordingly. Um, um, and, and the reason here is, um, of course, the, the, the services tell me um, or can reply and say, I don't have data. And if I own, um, receive only one result here, that's a good hint that I only have data from one of the services. And I'm lucky that it's the, um, the, that, that is the service. Let's have a look into the data. And so that's the metadata. Let's have a look into the data. Then you see, well, okay, so there is a service providing me with image data. Great, that was, well, no surprise here. That was what I was looking for. Um, let's have a look on the metadata of everything. Oh, what a lucky piece. 
at um, the Astron service. So, um, well, yeah, I was looking for radio data. Here we have it. So I find radio data on that position and um, that is great. Um, and here um, I find the data model. That's the OPSCOR model of the metadata on here. No surprise here. That's the same as on the server side. Um, so I look into the data. They have observational data. I only took the first 15 lines, again, for the sake of the tutorial. And I look into this and I find that, oh, it seems there is something with lols on the service. And it seems there is an intensity map on the Astron service that I could use. And that is, of course, great. So I don't only do not, not only do I have maybe an image, maybe I have a big, a bigger image there. And um, I could query for all of my positions and not just roughly for the field that I was interested in. Um, and um, let's see if I find more information about that. Oh, there is um, an, an access URL. How useful is that? There's a FITS file that I can download. That is great. Yeah, let's do that. And yeah, well, there I have it. It doesn't look, actually doesn't look that bad, right? I mean, that's kilobyte. So that's megabyte. Hence, no, before I do that, let's have a look into the um, estimated size of this thing. Let's have a look into the metadata, actually, if I want to download that. So uh, there's a success URL somewhere in here. So there is the size. Yep, that's great. And the units of that number is in kilobytes, which means this translates to more than one gigabyte. Yeah, I'm not going to download one gigabyte of image data now. That is a bummer. Now, um, why does Astron provide me with so big FITS files? What's 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 their deal here? Of course, it's radio data. They might have um, they might have um, big data sets, but do they really expose us to gigabyte of files? Is that thing? Let's have a look. Um, the the data sorry the data was pointing to this table there, so it's the that's um, that's the, the 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 observation ID is um, the LOLs mosaic, and indeed the last column here even tells me what's the source table there. So I can look into the LOLs mosaic and have a look into what that actually is. And if I look into the data, so the table data, uh, the the table metadata here, it's an explanation of um, what I can um, what I can expect here from the data and again i have um, some column data here and um now if i read into that it seems a bit odd um because um the data that i find here is um well if, if, if i really look that so if i look here then um i figure out that indeed this table here just provides me with one big image which is um the intensity map so um we will use that in the next steps and um, to figure out how to access that um, in the chapter five, accessing the detailing and soda. But before we do so, I want to go back to the script. Um, the, no, I don't want to go back to this script. I want to go back to the script of score. Nope, I actually wanted to go back to the script that's here in the background, sorry, to this script. Um, where I iterated over the services. Now, if I look into the script, then um, I used two lines in my script for um, for turning off warnings. I used one line to send the result to Topcat, so I could do um, do that. And I have a lot of lines with comments in here between. But um, even if I count my ADQL query as several lines. I come up with a dozen lines in here that provide me with not only a all the O search, it provides me with an all the O search on observational data that I'm interested in at a given position, at a given wave band, wave band, um, which is a radio. And that's surprisingly few, if you ask me. That's um, that's something. Um, that gives you a bit more power than you have with Google, with a bit more reasonable um, um, things that come Google. And what we have here already is, um, is that 
There is a lot of metadata at several points. Services exposing metadata about themselves, but also the metadata of the data they provide to the public, to the VO registry, and I'm capable of searching that. Each service of the, as if it is an OPSCO service, provides me with um, with a with a table that is standardized, so I can send the same query to all the OPSCO services, which already also means that the um, the data provider put a lot of effort into um, into um, providing the proper metadata to the services, so that I'm capable of accessing the services in that manner. And in the end, it comes down to, I can do that with a dozen lines of code in Python. Um, and maybe you're not familiar with Python. For me, that really is like, um, yeah, that's, that's how the world shall be in the 21st century. That's um, really, really nice. And I do see the lot of effort that is going in that, but that's really, really nice that people work together and do that. So um, I hope you get at this point already an, an idea of how usable and how um, feasible it is to use the 3 services that I introduced with, with Opsco here. 30 lines for no, the old VO search and to, um, to obtain data and to figure out that's where I want to go to, to access the data. Just, um, um, yeah, well, you can think about um, the results that I have here. Um, Provide me, of course, well, where have I with the results here? So if I look into the results, just think about I didn't stop with um, 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 with uh, 15. Just think about, well, I could have stopped with 1,000 or 10,000. And um, with the data that I have in here, um, I could have, um, so I have the access URL in there. Um, so I can download the FITS file if I want. I can restrict the fix, um, um, uh, the download by the um, size of the file because, well, yeah, six megabyte, I may download a few of these um, um, in, in, in overnight. Um, I'm not downloading a few of these overnight, but um, I could do so. And um, with, with more, like here, I do have metadata on the emission air minimum and emission maximum, maximum. And um, I can really, really, really work with this metadata or with this data um, um, published to me and um, seen and make an um, elaborate guess if I'm interested in this data. And I could do so um, from within um, my Python script and define that. And future, maybe future music. I know that Kai Polsterer um, is dealing with that. Of course, when it comes to machine learning and um, the different techniques there, yeah, well, uh, if we have it well defined here, my machine can make an elaborate guess of um, maybe um, how how to analyze the data that I don't even understand how it would do that. So that that's on the not only on the horizon, as you see, thirteen lines. That's possible right now already. Not with all the data out there, but with um, some data already, and we are also adding um, more and more radio data these days with that. So um, with that, we are finished with chapter four. And um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to make a 10 minutes break at that time, at that point, um, because, well, I'm talking the whole time and I think we all deserve one um, after one and a half hour roughly of video conference. So we're going to meet at um, 20, um, uh, in 10 minutes. So at um, 2040 again here, um, which is 2040 my time. I apologize for that. So it's 640 PM UTC and um, see you in a bit. Thank you. So I think um we we are back from from the um, um, um from the break and we can continue with the tutorial hopefully now we are um we're going to continue with chapter 5 
and um, which is about accessing the data and we're using data link and soda so far we only have um, and we only searched for the data on the ops course services now we want to um, access the data and find um, a good way to do so so um, we already looked into the um, looked into the um, into the table um, um, or the sorry we already looked into the metadata on the Alstron service and we already looked into the metadata a bit of um, the the table um, with the mosaic containing the mosaic and um, so we um, if we if we uh, sorry if we go back and look into our data that we retrieved from the Astron service. Then again, you see there is the data product of the intensity map. You saw that we have the source table in the back that we could access um, to figure out the data and that we have here. And um, we already also saw that from the data in there that um, the mosaic is a bit too big um, so that we don't uh, want to actual, actually download um, the soul mosaic but um, we're going to try and download ex um, the the, um, the metadata on the data because um, if you look have again have a look into the columns on here then none none of these columns here actually provide us with the information of um, or, or provide us with the image itself um, instead again we have uh, we have the information um, that um, there is the access size um, for that. So this is not the the table, the ops core table. Now this is the table Lord's mosaic that gives me information about that. There is again center alpha and delta delta, uh, delta. and I'm pretty sure there will be something in this metadata here pointing me exactly to this fits file because there we got it. But there is something more important here, and that is this excuse me column here. The column is um, um, PubDid, which is the publisher data set identifier for this data set. And whenever you find this column here, the PubDid column, then that's a good hint that um, behind that, um, that behind that data set that is there, well, there might be a data link. And the data link standard is one of the standards that um, people these days don't use often yet. And we weren't going to change that. Um, and I will show you what we can expect. So I'm going to download data from here. And I'm uh, being careful. I could say, um, um, well, let's download only three data points from there. And let's run the query. And when I do so, I see, well, the result is only one row, which is not a big surprise because, well, there was uh, the intensity map on there. So this is the metadata on there. So um, let's have a look into that. Yeah, so that's the data. And you see this, the um, access reference. Yep, there is the link to the FITS file. So in case things go wrong, I could still download a gigabyte of FITS, uh, or the gigabyte image, which I won't do, I don't want to do. But um, I have um, the data here and quite quite a bit of the metadata and I have the column pubbed it. So um, <clears throat> data link is a special standard in, in within the VO. The, um, the data link standard is used in a variety of, um, um, of, of ways, but it basically um, is, is a method to describe or to to give information um, about a, a data set that is not only covered um, by the metadata that you have um, uh, that you have with with this set alone or with the table data that I can find there. What does that mean? So um, you can think um, if a, if in the data set that I want to access could be a data cube, then um, um, or it might be uh, something a data set that um, is manifested in several images or more than one image. And in this case, the data link can be used to describe what's behind this actual data set and how I um, could access that um, and um, how I can um, how I can use this data product. And um, the um, the um, 
the pub ID pub did here the data set is used for this identification. So with this being said, let's have a look into what um, actually is in in there. So what I could use and in Topcat, I um, have the possibility to use the activation actions. And there you see there is uh, one action that I can have is um, I can invoke the service here and I can have a look into into what is there and you already see that there's view the data link table. There is a drop down menu providing me with more things. So you see I could send the fits image or whatever there. Um, I won't use that here. I will just say, yeah, let's have a view on the data link table. The data link table is meant um, to provide me with more information about what is going on with this data set. So I'm going to invoke this on the data of row one. This is very similar to all the other options that I have in the activation window here. We will make use a quite a bit of use later and with the SAM protocol here. So keep that in mind. Invoke on, row, on one row is um, something very feasible here. And you see the data link window opened and um, I'm getting a, a bit of information and it might be a bit overwhelming and a bit, um, well, I'm confusing at the first glance. So the first thing is um, I um, um, I see that um, the data link is providing me with an information about their, obviously, obviously um, I can have a server-side processing because there is an interactive service um, on the data set provided by the Astron service. And um, here is the description of the whole data set where we see that it's the image files and I can even access a preview of the data set so I could download um, a, um, the, the, a preview of the fits image which I won't try because um, even the preview of a gigabyte um, usually this will be a cutout of the image or it can be a cutoff of the image but it can still be huge so I don't dare to do that but go back to the interactive service of this data set. And if I now look into what's the details that's provided here, actually, um, then you see that um, there is a description for that. And the description is said there is a standard ID. And the standard ID that I find here is about um, Zoda. So Zoda, again, is a standard that often comes with data link. And Zoda is, stands for the server-side operations and for data access. And this standard just gives you the possibility to describe or to, to, pro, um, to provide descriptions of capabilities on the server side. Um, capabilities that are needed to access the data set of a data link. Now that sounds um, quite confusing, but actually what is meant is if my data link is a huge image, then Zoda can provide me with um, the possibility to perform a cutout on that given image, if I'm only interested in one part of that, or if um, my, my data set is, um, is a data cube, then I could use, um, your Zoda can describe um, the, or can provide a service um, for slicing that cube. And um, that's depending on the data that's in, in, in the background. So um, since this is say an, an, an image here, um, um, it's reasonable. And, and you see that, um, excuse me, <coughs> you see that here, it's reasonable that I can define um, geometries to make um, a cutout on the image. And again, now I could um, 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 use, um, use um, um, the circle here and define a circle by the position and um, by the, um, the radius of the circle. Um, and, um, and perform the cutout at this um, at this moment here. And um, that might be feasible, but again, um, I have a list of, remember, that's the result. I have a list of 23 rows. I'm not going to perform that 23 times here. I'm lazy. I don't want to do that. I want to do that um, in a reasonable way. And the reasonable way to, um, to do that, well, there is only one reasonable way. And that reasonable way is um, to do this from um, um, from um, from Python. So, um, how would I do that in Python? 
Um, there is a way to do this, um, and I'm going to, that's example number three. So let's, oh, I'm in example, sorry, I'm in example two, that doesn't work now. In example number three, I, um, I can use, um, I can use, oh, which one of, which one am I using here actually? Oh yeah, sorry. I'm, <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, um, ahead already. Um, or, or I forgot a bit here, so I forgot the about the exercises here. Um, if we if we want to perform the um, these these cutouts on the service, of course, we need to have an idea on what to cut it out and where to cut out. So um, if, um, for instance, I have a given position that I want to cut out, then um, how would I um, 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 how would I find information for that, what to cut out um, on the service? So um, the first thing is if, um, let's return to Topcat. I have the big image here. And of course, um, what I kind of want to do is um, to cut out, to make a cutout on the service. And for this, I could use, I can use soda. So I can use, <clears throat> Um, um, scripts to do that, and um, one of the scripts. So let's look into the Astron cutout script here. One of the scripts would look like something like that. And um, give you that. That looks quite quite a bit um, overwhelming here, um, but. Let's go through it um, and explain what's what's happening here. I import quite a few things that I need later. What I do use is the context lib. That's quite of important because I will use it here. So the reason here for that is the PyVO cl SAMP client is not happy with sending FITS files through the world. And I will use FITS files in Aladdin later. So um, this is the workaround for that. And... Um, I do the use a context manager here. Context managers in Python um, basically are very useful when you have um, kind of an infrastructure that you build and when you have to deconstruct the infrastructure. Um, especially you don't have to think about de deconstructing the infrastructure. Very useful. Um, what does that actually mean? So if you, if you open a file, and um, the old way in Python was that you had to open the file and explicitly close the file. If you forgot to close the file, the file would be open. And if you then just interrupt the script by key with a keyboard or the script would terminate unexpectedly, well, this file would stay somewhere, which um, um, is not that really nice. So uh, if you have a context manager, though, then the script, when the context manager will deal with the fact that once the script is exited or interrupted without the, these um, infrastructure being deconstructed, it will do so automatically. That's something very feasible, especially when handling files. And we will see later um, how, how important such a context manager is. In the end, you define, you use it to define a function and you call this function in the way like with something, do something, and um, then, well, the rest is within this loop of, um, of, of the context manager, within this context, then um, the context management will take care of this infrastructure building and deconstructing it. Now in between, and you see that is a good part of the of the code. The actual magic in between is what's happening here. And what's happening here is, um, first of all, we, we define something um, with a position, our a deck, and we define a radius. Then we make a top service. Um, we make a top service um, 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 protocol. Uh, sorry, top service object, and we um, we run the query select pub ID from lol small 
where we go and um, uh, so we only take that one and then I can use the um, the the um, the PyVO capabilities of the data link to um, to do something with this one here. So what happens is, as you see, I take the result. In the result, I didn't use the um, I didn't use uh, the position or the radius. What I used for the result is simply I'm taking this one line from this table. That's what I have in Topcat here. I'm, oops, that's that's this data here. And I'm taking this data, um, this table data, and do something with this. I iterate over the data links here, where there is only one, and use the first um, defined Zoda service here. So the, the, the process that's, that's provided, that's here. And what I do here is um, I perform a cutout. And the cutout is performed by, well, the Zoda service, the process of the Zoda service. And I find the circle here and give RA um, and the units. Well, of course, you need to give the units, hence the import of the AstroPy units over here. And give the unit radius again in the units. And, yep, yeah, well, I read the results, of course, into, my, into a file. And... This is the file that I send then want to send to Aladdin. If things work well, this file will be an image. If it's it's fits image that I send to, to Aladdin, and that um, happens here, client name is Aladdin. Now the um, the position, the radius are performed at a, not in the ADQL query, they are performed in the Zoda query, and I give give them hard coded here, but soft coded here. And the reason for that basically is um, I want to reuse the script. And of course I can um, keep the script flexible and generic um, for future use. That's where we're aiming it. Now let's run that. You don't worry, you don't have to understand everything that is going on in there yet. Just take for granted that this part here is very useful and you will see how useful it actually is even without uh, even if you're not yet familiar with that. So let's run that standalone Astron Python that, of course, you don't find Python. What about Python? Better. Up oh, there is a problem. Yes, I didn't. I don't have Aladdin running. I apologize. So let's run Aladdin. Here it is. Aladdin is up and running. And now I um, run the query and but yeah, nothing happened except that I do have data in Aladdin. So I can zoom in and here's the cutout that I just performed. And um, well, if you see, if I, if I hover here, you can see um, the position over there. So there is a lot of metadata coming with that fits file, of course. Um, the service provides me with that data because the service had the data, and here it is, and I can have a look into this data. And um, what I can do in Aladdin, of course, is I can make several, I can make several planes in here, and simply say, no, I have several, um, I have planes. Well, let's even let's also do the SDSS here. Now I have the several planes. I try to match these planes. Now I can zoom in and figure out maybe I find for this radio source, um, some candidates in these surveys around um, to figure out what that might be. So um, this is how I can Aladdin at this point. Now, um, sorry, I got a bit lost. So what we did here, of course, is that we performed the cutout simply assuming, well, there will be a radio source there, but we aren't sure. So, and if um, everything in here is just an assumption, because I think there might be one, I'm just guessing around, that of course is not feasible. And especially the radius of the radio source, that's not exactly what, um, um, that's not exactly useful. I 
actually need something that um, provides me with this data. And if I go back to the Astron service, then you figure out, yeah, um, well, luckily, there is a catalog providing me with exactly that data. And um, let's have a look into that. And um, that's the source catalog here. Now, that's your exercise. Have a look into that source catalog um, and figure out that's on page eight on the bottom. What are the columns in this catalog which provide us with a position on our A and deck and the size of the source? Important is the size of the source so, so that I can define the radius in the script. That's the one part. And the second part is how could an ADQL query look like that performs a clone selection of the table um, around maybe 100 arc seconds of, um, um, of the position? Um, and I give the position here for IA, it's 240.484, and for DEC, it's 46.768, with a result only containing the columns from the exercise above. So we have two, two tasks here. Find the columns that are helpful for us. How would an ADQL query look like to obtain these columns that I could use? And it might be fairly easy. Let's go for two minutes here. because we need to proceed to Sam soon. So the solution for that problem with the um, with the cutout is is um, the us is the exercise ADQL, and I'm going to start start that simply run that, and the solution for the first question is the exercise column names shall be source are a deck and major axis well. Let's have a look into that. Um, source are a DAC and well, oops, major axis. So the major axis of the source that I have here. And these are identified radio sources on that image there. That is great. So I can use that to perform a query uh, for that. And what would that query look like? How could I use an ADQL query providing me um, with something? Um, proceed to the next exercise. Yes, I want to. That's what the ADQL query could look like. So um, I select from the catalog salts, the source are a DAC and the major axis. And um, that's what I take here. And I do that. Um, um, this is a special way. That's the distance um, function here. That's the, the, the way how you make cross matches these days in ADQL. And again, there is RL, um, SRL, and I take these positions. Sorry, these are a bit different positions here that I have here, but that would be, um, that would look, be the ADQL query here. Now, um, why did I do this solution in a Python script and on the screen? The reason for that is, um, is, is maybe a bit surprising, but the bits that we have in the script will be useful in the future tutorial. Hence, I show you what it actually does. So I look into the main loop here, and um, well, I define um, I define um, the, the dictionary with the solutions here. It doesn't matter, and I iterate over the dictionary. If you're not familiar with that, um, this is how. Um, um, how you can iterate um, over over the dictionary. So the dic if you iterate over a dictionary, you don't iterate over columns. You iterate actually over the identifiers of the dictionary. And to access the column, then you need to so exercise will, will be column names or ADQL, 
And to access the actual data, I will need the bit of solutions and the identifier to get the, the string that's hidden here. But the actual bit that's interesting for us in future is, um, this is how you do string interpolation in Python. 3 equals x. Look at it that you have, you have the format here and here you assign to each of these bits in my string, I can assign variables or values, um, which then will, um, will be set exactly at that position in the string. So that's important here because we will need it in future. There is an ethnet, um, another thing in there, easy, but um, it's easy, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the thing, how do I, can I pause a script? Well, I can pause a script waiting for user input against something that we will make use of in the next scripts. So hence, you get that overview here, how it can do that. Now, um, the next exercise is waiting for you. And, um, and um, this exercise now deals with extend the script of the Astron cutout. So this one here, extend this, this script in a way that um, you use the ADQL query um, that you just did in the exercise above and um, to perform a cone selection and use the string interpolation to make the ADQL query flexible in regard of the position and as a bonus, when run standalone, this script shall search for the position at array 240 per default and, um, and um, um, the deck 46, but whatever. And um, the, actually this whole script shall be callable from an external, or the, the whole function, the functionality shall be callable from an external script. That's what we want to do in, in this step. And, um, I think um, if I give you 20 minutes, that might be already a bit, bit daring for this one. So that's not what I do, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you two minutes again to think about what might be the solution here. And uh, maybe you find the solution or, um, on your own and, and then we'll look into the solution that I provide for this. So, okay. We have we have a second script that we're going to look at now, and that's the Astron Smart Cutout. That is the script here, and I keep the other script next to it so you can see a difference that we did here. And um, so the first difference is that I defined a function, get a single radio source. And there you see, yeah, okay. Um, I see that might be, that might already be a difference. And um, um, so let's let's start with it, with the part that stays very, very, very much the same. You see, we still send the stuff to Aladdin. We, um, we still, um, 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 we still use, you define a circle here. But in, in this case, we defined the circle in a slightly different way. Here we had it hard coded at the radius here, and here we are taking a variable major axis. And uh, what happens is um, in the first go, um, um, so, well, oh, hang on, sorry. Um, the first thing that I did was we took the whole process out of the main loop and put it in, a, in, a, in the function recipe. And in, from the main loop, I only call this, um, the function recipe with this position. So the function recipe takes two positions. Uh, sorry, it takes one position defined by RA and DAG. These are the values here. So that this, this is the reason because when I start the script, the main loop is that that is um, that is run. If I import the script from a different in, a, in an external Python script, this one is not run. Then I don't have this, and that's really nice because then I can refer to only a function in here um, without caring about what's happening here, and I can um, care about the function here, which is well taking um, taking a position. That's what was demanded in the exercise. Now um, the first step is get a single radio source. 
And again, what is the goal what we have? We want to cross-match positions that we have from our candidates and figure out, is there a, is there a radio source for this position on, in the catalog there? So that's the ADQL query above. So here is the thing. We get the, we give the position to the script, get single save radio source. We make the top service object. That's how the top service object works. You're used to that. We have a query. That's the ADQL query that we just made. Only thing is we use string um, interpolation at position RA and position deck. And we define that the position in RA shall be well, the RA that we um, um, that is in our argument here, and the position underscore deck is the argument deck that we give here. Very easy, actually. And that's our string interpolation. So nothing to be scared about, um, of here. And uh, we run this whole thing, that's um, do, and we return the result. So the result is a VO table. Uh, so that's a VO table with hopefully only one source, um, radio source on that. Then we define, well, the top service that we did for the soda cutout as well here, in here. Again, we define this one. We um, get the result here for the pop ID from that service. We, and um, then we um, we iterate over these results. And now, uh, not we, sorry, you don't iterate over these results. We go through the data link for this. We go, um, we take the Zoda service that we want to access. And now we iterate over the table, our table. And what we do is we iterate over, what do we have? We have the source, so the object ID. We have the position in RA and DAC, and we have the major axis in that table here. So object ID, RA, DAC, major axis, that's in what we have here that is in radio source to table. The reason for the to table is here. Um, this one, the radio source here is a VO table object. VO table objects are not iterable. So with to table, I'm transferring this VO table object into an AstroPy table, which is iterable. So I can do that. And again, I'm defining this order service. Now there is the only difference. Now the order service is defined in the loop. Because it could be that there are that there is more than one source coming from the table, and um, I have it in the loop. And again, the circle is defined well by the position that I gave, and um, um, about, sorry by the by the position that is the result of our cross match here, and by the major axis from there. So now. Um, the major axis on the size of the image is defined for each of the radio sources, which is very feasible because each of them has a different size. And if I have that, well, I send this to Aladdin. Now, the standalone type here, of course, is I want to run the script and show you to demonstrate that it works. So that's what I'm going to do. Python Astron cutout. Oh, Astron smart cutout. Sorry. There we go. And yeah, again, we don't see a result here, but we see a result in Aladdin here. So that's um, can, so that's our our result. That's a different um, the different image that we have now here in Aladdin. Now this is the preparation for what comes in the next chapter. And um, in fact, that's basically how you easily can access um, a Zoda service and how you can prepare that. Because, well, as you as you see, there is no nothing to fear about. There is no um, really, really, really hard thing to do. I'll give you that in the moment that you look at it, it at the first glance. That's a bit overwhelming, but um, if you dig into it, it's actually not not too hard. Are there so far any questions? Because we're going to move to SAMP. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to continue with SAMP. Um, chapter six, the interoperability with SAMP. The SAMP protocol is the simple imaging access protocol. And it enables as, um, 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 applications in astronomy team, um, who run um, that run on the same machine to talk to each other and to exchange 
um, data from one machine to the other. So this data might be, um, as we saw, we can use it to, to exchange FITS data, we can use it to, um, to exchange um, MVO tables that what we broadcasted from our scripts to TopKit already, but there is more to that. Um, you can use, you can simply, you can send coordinates or you can highlight rows and there is um, quite some flexibility in, in, in the SAMP standard. Again, in my view, the SAMP standard actually is, um, is not valued in the way that one that it actually should be because it's quite powerful and quite, quite flexible if you deal with that. And um, a good part of this tutorial now is about that, actually the rest, because we're going to um, develop a nice, um, a nice SAMP client. Actually, it's quite two nice SAMP clients. So let's have a look in how does, actually, how does a SAMP standard actually look like. So um, I have a simple stand, simple SAM table, say a simple SAM client to receive tables, table data. So what do I have here? Again, it looks and on the first glance that looks that looks it looks like a bigger thing. But let's continue to the main loop. What I have, I turn off the options. Yeah, I define um, stop script. Yeah, why do I do that? Well, because I'm calling that at the very bottom. You remember, I told that as at, um, I said that we need some user interaction to pause a script. That's what's happening here, and I need to refer that so early on. I define the I define the um, function so that it does. The, um, I define the variable so that I can stop the script. Now there is an issue that's not so nice, and the, um, the developer in me is a bit reluctant to do so. But I define defining functions within the main loop. That's for, for, for Python users a bit a bit reluctant. But I um, had either to do it in this way, um, to refer to the client object of the SAM client. Um, I, if I don't define it here, it's not available. Or I could have used, of course, global variables. And if you have the choice between global variables and defining a function, um, 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 a short function in the main loop. Yeah, you go for the short function. Um, global variables are, um, well, plaque and cholera. So don't don't use that. Um, so here I define a function, and um, this function is called receive table, and it comes with well, there is some, there is um, it comes with with some exactly six arguments, and this is important that it has exactly six arguments. I called them in the way that, um, because they're describing the, um, describing what's uh, coming in from a SAM message. So I uh, define it here. I also def already defined the function um, call um, coordinate, but we don't need it now. It will, you will fill this function in a future step. So it will follow with us in the scripts quite some time. I'm defining a variable. Um, the client name, PyVO, simple SAM, um, description for the client, so I can access that. And then here it begins, starts the magic. I'm starting with a client object, so that's done with PyVO, SAM, SAM integrated PAL client. The name is, well, the client name, so I hope to find um, PyVO, simple SAM in the SAM pub. The description is in there, and um, due to a possible bug, on machines, we have to be explicit on where to listen. You, it may not be um, that you have to do that, um, but it happened on, on on machines from with people I worked with, and um, so we we did this and we issued a bug report about that. Be to be on the safe side, we just do it here. Keep that um, with you until the bug is solved. I think. Um, then we connect the client to the hub. And here is the magic that we now have, because um, we still need to define how this all works together and what happens. And what we have to define here is we bind um, bind a receive call to of the M type table load VO table. We bind that call to the function receive call table. And the function receive call table has to exact, accept exactly six arguments. And we have 
at the same point uh, time, we are friendly to reply to the client and say, yep, we received that. What we also define in our function receive call table is, well, we define a function, the magic table, and this is the magic that we have here. And we keep this function out of the main loop because here now we can mess around and do the real Python magic as long as we want it, as, as it comes, whatever we want to do, and we don't have to keep it in the main loop. Hence, for readability, that's the reason why we, 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 we define a function within a function. Uh, but that's why we take another function here. It's just the readability and the less confusing bit of um, if you, you really do some magic um, in, um, with your SAM client. So again, we, um, we, we bind this function and then, well, yeah, we are waiting for user input to stop the script. So as you can guess, this script shall simply accept a VO table that is sent from a different, um, from a different VO client to here. Let's run the script. And that's some table, here we go. And yep. This one is just waiting for input. And I'm in Topcat, go away from the tab. And I'm, yep, yeah, I'm taking my table here and simply say, oh no, I'm taking this table one here because that's so, and what I'm going to do with that. Well, um, I want to say that and save, uh, send this table to um, my, my SAM client. And my SAM client is called, well, it's called PyVO Simple SAM. There it shall go. And we run it. Yeah, well, nothing happens here, of course, because what happens is eventually that the magic, uh, the, the function magic table prints the parameters that it gets and prints, well, your Python table magic here. That's what happens. It prints the name of the table, it prints the table ID, and it prints a URL. It prints a URL on my local host, and that's uh, the important bit. It does not send me the table. It sends me the information that I need to access the table. And I need to access, at one point, if I want to read the table, I need to access the information. So for now, this table actually is, isn't on my um um in in my in my um, in my python magic um, my python script um, involved so it's just the information and that's your exercise that's on page 10 the exercise use exactly these parameters to load the table into um, into the script and to prove that you did so simply let the script print the table for now and um it's fairly easy. I'll come back in a minute. So here's what we did. We received the parameters. That's the part that was there already. That's the part that's new. With the parameters, we <clears throat> pass, we use the VO table parser to pass the whole stuff to a table. And um, what we going, what, what we do is we identify the table and we load the table and we pass the table from locally from the URL given by the parameters URL. So that's the dictionary here that we are taking here and we print the table. How does that look like? Well, we need to send the table of course There it is. So that was two lines, fairly easy. <clears throat> now, um, that's what we did here. Unbeknownst to you, I added a, a bit, and that was here. I added a context manager to the connection and the whole bit here changed a bit. And the reason for that simply is, remember what, what I when I talked about context managers, 
um, and saying like context managers help us um, <clears throat> building an infrastructure and deconstructing an infrastructure and taking care of that. Well, this actually did not happen with the script before and with our client there. Hence, if you just look here, we do have two Python clients, Python simple SAM clients here, both with the same name, but one of them is a zombie. One of them simply doesn't work if I send, and it's, it's always the upper one. If I try that, that won't work. But if I do it here, it does work. And then yet again, a table here in, in my client. And the reason for that is that I didn't have a context manager, um, and especially the PyVO SAM context lib context manager uh, and, um, in, in the other script. So to avoid collecting zombie um, um, SAM clients here, I added this here and this one, this line here will continue in our script from now on. Very useful. Keep in mind, context management is very, very useful. And of course, if I now call this, um, this um, context manager, this happens now a bit slightly different with this, um, with this here. So with SAM connect, con as connection, um, well, yeah, do this. And part of the do this, this is, of course, um, oops, the loop that provides, sorry for that, um, the loop um, providing the user interface. And in there, you will still find how, I, how to um, bind functions to that. So um, with this said, and the next exercise is waiting for you. And the next exercise is modify this script here. So, oops, the... The script um, exam, oops, the script exercise read table in a way that um, so that first um, the SAM client shall handle sky coordinates to not only the, um, um, the receive um, the table and use the binding and the calling functions to do so. And to prove that it works, just um, use print to show that RA and DE are. Um, are uh, processed. Um, there is a note for that. You will make have to make use of Topcat's activation actions to to, to work with this. And um, you can yeah. And you um, depending on what you did in the past, you may have already a few of these here of these um, squares here. Um, in this case, of course, you can simply close Topcat. And, and open it again. Actually, I'm going to do that so that you see I'm going to have a vanilla top kit. And um, so, and I can use below the table that I prepared for this. Um, so now I'm going to load from PySource, I'm going to load the objects with colors into top kit because that was um, the colors that I had after the cross match with SDSS. So again, yeah, um, I will hurry through that a bit. Again, a few minutes for exercise, a minute for, for the exercise to do that and to get an idea how to do that. Henrik, I don't know if you're looking yeah. on Discord, but there you've got a 10 minutes time warning. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I have a, I know, okay. um, I see the time here. So, um, I'll go back to the scripts and just show you the, um, oh, what happened here? Mm, oh, yeah, I, I um, closed um, Python, uh, Topcat in between and with Topcat. Um, gun was the SAMP up, and that's why the script is complaining. So um, let's have a look into into our um, into our um, exercise with the coordinates. Um, that's the result of that. What we want to add to the script. Um, the magic. So let's start with the magic coordinates. Well, the magic coordinates are here. They're taking the parameters, the parameters then um, 
have um, RA and DEC in there. So this is um, this, um, yeah, you can find, well, how would you find these? Well, again, think about the hint reading, reading um, the, the documentation um, for these is one thing and using a Python interpreter to figure out what's in these parameters is helpful. And of course you can simply print the parameters whenever they are, they are coming in to have a look at these. And that's what's happening here as well. RA and DAC is the dictionary that we want to have. So that's happening here. But um, again, there's the context management. Um, what do we have here now? Now we needed a second function to receive the call. Again, it takes exactly six arguments. And it, <clears throat> why do we define a second a second function for that? Yeah, well, because we're calling a different function and if they the functions may behave differently towards the sending machine. So that's um, the point here. Here we are calling the co um, coordinates and send the parameters to there. And that's the magic where it happens. Here we define that the coordinate point at sky is the M type, and that shall ca call the function receive call coordinate. That's the function here. How do I know what's the M type? In our examples, you see um, the SAMP thing, and you see the, the, the M types of SAMP published. And here, um, here is the explanation. The one M type is table load, the VO table. One is, well, table load asterisk. One is table highlight load. And um, there is more to that, as you see. And there is one M type coordinate point at sky. And in this M type, the arguments shall be RA and DAC. Whereas if you remember for the table that we, um, that we loaded, the arguments were a URL, a table ID and a name. And this is very helpful. Now you know, oh, here I find the M types. Now I can develop my stuff um, accordingly to the standard here. How does that look like if we run the script? Well, not much of a success, um, of, a, of, of a surprise here, coordinates. There it is. And yeah, now I have to go to Cop Topcat, go to the activation window. Uh, I'm not loading the table to the script. I could do that, but we know already that that works. But what we want to do now is have something like this, have the sky coordinates here, and invoke it on row one. And it says there is a fail. Why wouldn't it take the, oh yeah. So the fail is I should, I think, yep, select the, the application where it, where it shall sound to. And then you see, well, it took the sky coordinates, it printed and there it, it, it took it in. So that works. Now the next step is um, very fastly. Remember that we have a script that's taking sky coordinates in and um, that this script then performs the cutout for that. That's very, very feasible right now. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, you see, um, um, there are still two exercises to go. I won't let you go because um, I have three minutes and I will take these three minutes to show you where this all leads and show you the bit of the magic, which <clears throat> to your surprise, you are able to develop from here, actually. So if you got the idea of what's happening, what's going on, you're fine on the side. So we have the example that we had our cutout script, right? So let's go to example five. And um, the cutout script was taking um, 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 sky coordinates to perform the cutouts. Remember we had the recipe that we defined for that exactly. And um, now I have the two, two scripts in there. I have um, the Astron smart cutout script that I had before in an example. And I have my SAMP handler here. And now I'm looking into this in my new, into my new SAMP handler. Um, whoops, into the SAMP handler. And <clears throat> see, what am I doing here and how do I do things? First of all, I import the Astron smart cutout and call it Astron because I can. In my magic coordinates, I don't need the table. So skip, um, kick out the table thing. I just need the magic coordinates, bind them as I used, used to do in the bottom. And here 
I have array in deck defined that. I print it and you will, yeah, that's simple, isn't it? I'm passing, I'm passing array in deck to Astron, that's the namespace, and the function recipe. And the rest is happening there. Oh, that can't be true, is it? And what what is actually what is actually going on if I do that? So let's look at this. Again, starting. Again, it's waiting for me entering S to stop the script. So I'm going to going to have the activation in. I have to reselect them. The uh, oh yeah, I have to select the Astron cutout. I changed the name for that, and um, well, I mark one of the table, one of the objects. I invoke that, and yeah, what happens? Does something happen? Yeah, something happens here. My Python magic happens here, but there is Python magic happening here as well. Again, shut down Aladdin to make it sure that the ma magic is happening there. So there's Aladdin. Easy way, take a different road, invoke it. Magic is happening here. Magic is happening here. I have data in here. There is my cutout. Now, that is one thing. The actual, the actual goal of all that would have been, and I'm taking, I'm sorry to take these two minutes, to, if you continue the, um, continue with the, um, with the, with the script, then you will find that all together here. I, um, and I need a second. Sorry, need a second. Sorry, Hendrik, the time yeah. is up. Can we um, start wrapping up, please? Yes, I um, just want to present the last script where we'd all sh shall um, um, go. You see, I have four scripts here. The one that we just had, the cut, the smart cutout here, the smart cutout here. And there I have something like um, a SAMP handler dealing with SED. And um, yeah, I will simply, simply present how that works together. So I'm going to run the Python Python SED SAMP handler, run that from here. And I'm running the Astron SAMP handler in, the, in here. SAMP handler, yep, in here. This one is giving me that, that one is giving me something else. So the Python SED sampler is dealing with the table row highlighting. So I need to send this to there. There you see it goes there. And um, I have two SAM client, uh, Python clients now here in the bottom. And if I know, now simply say send row index. Yep, do that. Send the row index to here and invoke that. I configured that script to make me a Python, uh, an SED plot from the colors that I have in this table. How do I do that? I use UCDs. How I do that? Look into the script. That's It's a magic of, of its own. But now that I have that, I can simply go through that, look at the plot and say, well, this is an old SED, isn't it? I want to have a cutout from exactly that script. And I do that again, views at the activation window, um, activation thing, go to the sky coordinate. I already marked that. So now I say invoke on row seven, that's the marked row here, invoke that one. And what happened? and it fails for reasons I don't know. So that unfortunately now fails at a point I have to figure out. Oh, it's, oh yeah, um, I have to redo that. It does not fail. Here it is, there is the data and that I can continue. So finally, at the end, I'm having Topcat and I use Topcat to, um, to control an SED plot and to control cutouts that I sent to Aladdin. And that's the magic behind things in the old standards working together, which in this case is Datalink, is Zoda, this um, SAMP going on a lot of SAMP, but of course there's VO table involved, there's OPSCO involved when we discover the data and so on. And that is what I wanted to present. And if you go through the tutorial, I hope you now have an idea how this is, uh, how this works together and what you can do and how you can, well, write your own clients maybe with that. With that, thank you very much.